so hey good evening everybody what a privilege it is to be here honestly thank you uh thank you for listening thanks to simon um uh for inviting me um really 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 kind of you um we had an interesting dialogue this year about how we can pass on lessons learned and how important alumni is and uh, and i was really happy to engage and and, and try and get to that point <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm at the sort of afternoon of my army career. Technically, uh, I should leave next year. Uh, I'm a major general. Um, I always said I'd leave when the fun runs out. And uh, I didn't think I'd make it to major, never mind major general. Um, but, but, but here I am and I've uh, been surprised a few times along the way. Um, and it's been, um, it's, it's been really interesting. And, and I do hope that but my insights this evening will sort of like share some ideas get some conversation going between you all and uh, uh, with, 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 with where I've been. And I owe a lot of that to school. I owe a lot of that to RHS. I would not be sitting here, um, even though it's quite hard right now in the middle of the pandemic and uh, in the middle of exercise, if it hadn't been for RHS and the influence that people brought, brought to me, even though at the time I didn't like some of it. And uh, Matthew will recall, you know, we sparred and uh, we had differences, but, but, but honestly, if it, I wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't for the school you're at. I mean, you're at a great institution and, uh, and, and I hope you're making the making the most of it. So just briefly, um, I'm chief of staff of a NATO Joint Forces Command. Um, uh, being in Italy is really quite interesting. Being in Naples, of course, Nelson. Uh, I think most of you are in Nelson House, uh, a big association with Naples. Uh, I've just been doing some work this afternoon about the UK Carrier Strike Group coming through here next year. That's the Queen Elizabeth. Um, and uh, we're going to celebrate Nelson uh, and his base here when he was hunting down uh, uh, the French. Uh, in simple terms, it's it's NATO's operational level um, headquarters, a head office in the south. Um, we're responsible for all NATO operations across southern Europe, the Black Sea, Eastern Mediterranean, North Africa and the Middle East. And I'm the chief of staff of the, uh, of the, of the headquarters. It's about 900 strong from 30 different nations, uh, ranging in, in from uh, from young sailors and soldiers and Marines all the way through to old uh, old generals. My boss is a US Navy four star. He's an admiral, a full, full admiral, who's also the boss of US Navy um, Europe and, and Africa. And that brings some interesting challenges working in a multinational environment. My, my deputies are Spanish, Greek and German. And then my, my team below that number all sorts of different, uh, different nations. Um, we spar every day with the Russians at sea in the Black Sea and the Eastern Mediterranean and in the air. And we do it just below the threshold of a fight for those uh, people doing international relations who are interested in that. And, and right now, we've just started a 10-day exercise um, to prepare ourselves to be the NATO High Readiness Force. And fictitiously, I'm actually, I should be, and the headmaster wasn't joking, I should be in a bunker um, in Norway, but actually reflecting being in, in North Africa in a fictitious country, because that's what we do in NATO to keep political sensitivities right, but it's actually Libya. And so uh, we are re we are re refighting that piece. And I've literally just come from my last uh, last major bat rhythm event this evening, connecting the force. Our friend, our maritime component, which is a carrier strike group, uh, lots and lots of warships, is from France. Our air component, um, which is the complete range of, of of air capability, comes from Italy. Our special forces are coming out of uh, uh, Denmark and Sweden, and our um, uh, land component, our army is coming out of Turkey uh, with, interesting enough, significant British uh, British reinforcements. So, so quite a quite a spectacle, uh, and I can't believe I find myself, you know, the chief of staff of the organisation. Uh, although I have to say, talking to you lot is more nerve wracking than talking to them lot a couple of hours ago. <laughs> you know, um, so so where do I begin uh, in terms of of this? And I kind of I kind of thought about three things: self, um, teams, and networks, and then resilience. Three, three buckets of, of, of ideas and stuff I've learned. And, and some of you may have heard that, that uh, or you will see afterwards, I think. Um, I, um, I put a Facebook post out on, uh, on an alumni website, on a Facebook um, page, page at the weekend. Thought, oh, I'll find out. And my idea was to ask the question, what if I knew then what I know now? And uh, I was astounded by the response. There were some quite funny ones. Uh, but actually, there were over 100 responses from alumni with top top tips and uh, I, that you'll be copied them and you'll see them. And honestly, have a read through and see the diversity of the backgrounds of the people that have written in. And I was I was humbled, actually. The only trouble is they took all my ideas, which was <laughs> uh, which is great. But uh, but 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 uh, the power of the power of social media. Um, so that's the kind of idea. Talk, talk about those three things. Um, 
and I remember RHS, you know, my time at RHS, which has some great memories. Um, we worked hard, we played hard, uh, we had as much fun as we could. Um, it wasn't always easy. There were some terrible lows, and you'll probably remember those, the first days. I'll never forget the, the food, the whatever we were fed on that first day. I'd never eaten anything like it. Um, returning from a really good holiday, there's always that down after half term, isn't there? Going back to school, leaving your family and all the fun. Um, and then I was surprised by the final speech day. We all cried our eyes out. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. We couldn't wait to escape the place. We were like desperate to leave. And then when it came to the end, we were really, really sad to be saying farewell to each other. Um, so, but there were some real highs, some academic progress, some sporting achievement at house and school, and most of all, the camaraderie, the esprit de corps, the achievement of, uh, of doing stuff. And, I, and I, I frequently quote as a soldier, I always talk about the Band of Brothers, you know, Shakespeare, I think it was Agincourt, Henry, the, Henry VIII, whatever, Matthew will correct me, no doubt, or an English teacher in the room will, or Maggie might. Um, or episode nine, Band of Brothers is what I always tell the truth, which is why men fight and my women are men fight now. Uh, it was all about uh, being part of a team and uh, it was really, really, really powerful. Um, I, I kind of I kind of remember, you know, going through the decision making of leaving RHS and going in the army. And uh, it was quite a quite an interesting time. And and again, if it wasn't for Matthew, um, I wouldn't I wouldn't be here because I come from a quite a. a, a uh, steady background. My dad was the chief in the Navy. I was the first person in my family to get an educational qualification. They wanted me to go in the, in the military as an apprentice to be an engineer because that's what they all were. Uh, Matthew, my housemaster, challenged them on that. I'll never forget it. And, uh, uh, and, and that's why the headmaster referred then to changing direction after O-levels because we discovered that I wasn't following what actually I was naturally quite good at. Um, which was the art, more the art subjects. And, and actually what it became was more about leadership in, re in reflection. Uh, I, I picked up a, about people and, 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 and I think I learned that. Um, I learned that really, really, really uh, early on. And as an army officer, it was, uh, um, it was that ability to connect with each other uh, to, to, to do so. I, I, you know, in, in the army, you take people into harm's way. Uh, you inspire them, you face danger, you coach, teach, mentor, listen, navigate with their personalities. You calm their fears, maximize their talents. It's really, really, really important. And, and and I think RHS gave me that because we lived in such a community you're living in now. We we learned that from each other and you learn a, you learn a skill. You don't even know you, you don't get a test on this skill. You, you just learn it and, and you don't even know you've got it until you till you till you come out of it. But it's really, really important. Um, it's not it wasn't about rank. It's not about even now, you know, and uh, I, went, I went to a regiment where where they don't. Uh, you know, it, it was it was tough, really, really tough. You 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 led because you were respected. Um, they did they they did what you wished to do because they really respected you, not because you had any rank or anything. I always have this great phrase: ideas ideas have no rank. Um, and you know, we did everything uh, to, to to extremes. But it's all about understanding for us about how to get the best out of people to achieve uh, to achieve the mission. Uh, Matthew, remember this. It was 1982, and I think this is where it started for me. I remember being on duty in Collingwood in the junior dorm. Falklands War had just started, and the task force had sailed, and lights were out, and I was just sitting there reading a book, just making sure the young, um, uh, the the younger students had, had gone to, had gone to sleep, and uh, we were really really aware of what was happening in the war. And that night, HMS Sheffield got hit by an Exocet missile. And we had children at school whose 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 dads were in the conflict. And, we, and I remember, and I can visualise it right now. There was a boy in the dorm whose dad was on that warship. And um, I think I remember. I think he survived. Uh, uh, but but I remember just being part of something. You know, just being part of of something really quite powerful in in, in understanding about caring. And, and and that's what I would describe myself as 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 a leader that that uh, that really 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 cared about people. Uh, and that stuck, that stuck with me for years. You know, I've been to Northern Ireland three times, decorated Bosnia twice, decorated Iraq three times in a bit of time in Syria, Afghanistan for a whole year. Oh, my God, that was hardcore. Um, and, and a couple of other places. And, and in each campaign, people have made the ultimate sacrifice. You know, I've made decisions uh, that have hurt people and uh, I've had to live with those those consequences. I've nearly been hurt a few times myself and um, I've led some incredibly passionate, some incredibly reckless, 
some incredibly um, you know fearless people but I've also every single one of those have always been quite frightened they've always been terrified they've always been and so how you get the best from them and then you live it and I always think of the look in people's eyes when you're in danger and 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 uh, of how you inspire people and you just got to be stronger and better and 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 live to it and I always think about that wee boy in bed in Collingwood and you know he had a dad at war and then the, I've been to war with uh, soldiers females and and males I would hasten to add I had a combat medic in my Iraq tour who was just unbelievable she was so brave and um yeah they all have mums and dads brothers and sisters uh, sons and daughters and uh, uh that 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 if you and if you if they if they they did things for me because I cared about them that was the key and it was it was simple caring it wasn't 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 big and, and I, le- I think I learned that uh, at, at school and, and let me digress briefly just a little amusing story I, I, I after my Iraq trip I was decorated I got an OBE which is known as other buggers efforts <laughs> I was the leader it was acknowledgement of what the uh, what the battle group had achieved but I had to go to um, to Buckingham Palace to get my medal and uh, um, the day I went um, Her Majesty the Queen was supposed to be presenting the gongs and uh, she had the flu and uh, so we're in the lineup and uh, uh, Princess Anne was presenting the medals and in the in front of me was a young soldier from my battle group who was who was going to get a military cross for for bravery he was 19 years old I mean this lad was it was just what he did in on the battlefield was incredible he was shaking he was absolutely shaking and we're literally about to to go in and I'm calming him down, talking to him, look at your parents, look for mum and dad, look for your parents, look for your brother and sister and you'll, you'll be fine. And everything went brilliantly. And I'm literally about to go through and uh, one of the equerries comes up to me and says, oh, um, I think I was a colonel, Colonel Deakin, Her Majesty, this is the Queen, would like you to come back and see her tomorrow um, because she's sorry she can't see you today. She had the flu. And I was like, oh, damn. Because after this medal ceremony, we were going to have a massive party <laughs> with all our friends. And then this party was about to be um, about to be uh, put off because I need to stay sober and also be smart for the next day. Anyway, I returned to the palace the next day for an audience with Her Majesty. She did have the flu. It was just the two of us. And she was insisting on seeing me to thank you, thank me for my service because I was commanding her regiments. And she said to me, she said, wasn't that wonderful, the young soldier who got the military cross and i and i said to her, i said it was amazing ma'am i mean she um he was shaking he was really really shaking and he was so nervous and uh her majesty the queen said to me she said you know that reminds me of a story of daddy and at that point i realized i went oh my god daddy that was king george <laughs> and uh, i remember thinking okay this is and uh, she said daddy um Daddy presented a, a, a bravery award to a young sailor in World War II. He'd crawled into a, a torpedo, hadn't fired out of a warship, and the, the sailor had crawled into the torpedo tube to push the torpedo out. And Daddy said to the uh, sailor, wow, that was a mighty brave thing to do. You've been terrified. And the young sailor said to Daddy, and this is the words of the Queen, not half as bloody terrified as I, was stand, as I am standing in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> and there's something about that and I'll, I'll never forget that there's something about that uh, in our culture about just being grounded and down to earth and really respecting people really 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 respecting people and, and I, I think there was something very unique about RHS in that we were from a big cross-section of society you know uh, and we we're predominantly navy when I when I went through um, but we were all ranks from all backgrounds and that really really leveled everybody and I think it was and it, it, it made me um, part, part of part of who I am so that kind of picks up the sort of the first part of my talk about uh, about self if, if you if you're still if you're still with me so do you want to take any do you want to ask a question or anything before I move on to the I suppose just one question that sort of springs to mind just to give you a chance to, to grab a drink but uh, you're talking about working in a multinational uh, environment uh, one where you've worked around the world there's a big question that comes when we talk with young pupils, our pupils at, at RHS, about the role of languages. And I was also just struck that you're there, you are working with lots of different people from different countries. <clears throat> you didn't do languages. How important has that been in terms of your own career? 
how, you know what what sort of advice would you give to to people at school about learning languages learning culture cultural intelligence i suppose uh, in the places of operation that's a really really good uh, question simon actually so yeah and no, i didn't do languages and i was going to tell a joke about languages later actually so i'll come back to that <laughs> and, a, and a certain french teacher um but uh, um uh I got, I got I did basic French of course and I've learned to speak German I've learned to speak uh, French enough to get by because in NATO you've got to be able to uh, you know be able to switch quickly not not but mostly in 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 the uh, in in our work English is the first language my ink my Italian is useless even though I've lived in Italy for two years because we just don't work in Italian um what I would pick up on though is your last piece about being culturally aware that's the key cultural awareness is the uh, is the key and and I um I uh, I often refer to that, you know, I need to understand the French. Is that Jonathan? I can see Jonathan Booley. Is that Jonathan Booley? Yeah. 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 Uh, cultural awareness is really important. And I joke about it, but, you know, I work with French and Germans and Italians. And and you need to really understand how they think to uh, to do it. So, so a classic came out today. In our culture, we would do a thing called truth to power. So, so you know, an NCO, an officer can can tell me, hey, boss, this is rubbish. We're not doing this right. Can you fix it? You can't do that to an Italian or a German. <laughs> it just fails every time. Um, but then if I think about my missions and operations, I think about Afghanistan, I think about Iraq. You know, I mean, we went in there in both those places culturally unaware. And so, so I think languages is really important in terms of understanding culture. And then if you can immerse yourself in it, to really get 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 into it, then then get then go for it. You know the the really talented people are those that can just flip, just switch from one to the other. So so I so I am a fan. And if I went back again to school, I would definitely have turned up the volume in terms of languages. I don't think we I don't think we did it particularly well yeah. in my in my generation in my in my view. Um, Matthew, remember, I think one of our French teachers went mad at one point. I can't remember. <laughs> we drove him crazy. I'm sure Matthew might come in on that in a moment, but look, uh, I'm sorry to, to take you off tangentially uh, slightly there, but uh, you know, do, do do please carry on. I mean, I, I know that. Okay, cool. So, so my second part was really all about um, network teams. So you come from a family, then you go to a school and you play you play in teams, don't you? It's rugby teams, football teams, volleyball teams, or whatever it might be, hockey teams and and stuff. And then and then what follows teams, I think, is networks. And I really 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 learned the importance of importance of those and. And, the, and, and what I'd say to the um, to the students is, um, and I say this to everybody who ever turns up wherever I am now, is understand the power of the network that you're now developing. It will be really useful for you in the future. Really, really useful. The RHS network, then wherever you go next, and then wherever you follow. And I found myself um, constantly re-energizing or illuminating a, 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 a network. And... Um, I've, I've had a couple of mentors in my uh, career. <coughs> These are characters I've come across who I found really useful to, to help me out. And one of them, one of my mentors, was a very senior character in MI6, North Africa in the Middle East, who, who mentored me through through a combat tour there. Uh, and very unusually, because I, I believe in the power of cognitive diversity, and he was brilliant. And he always talked about build your network and illuminate it regularly. Illuminate it regularly. So you have to force yourself to go, right, who haven't I spoke to today or I need to... And you've got to try and build your network that's not naturally your friends, not naturally the people you would uh, you mix with. Otherwise, you face being in a in, in an echo chamber. But my my RHS network has moved moved me on a few times, sometimes accidentally, sometimes deliberately. At one point, there were four of us in my regiment from RHS, all from a Navy background. And how that happened, we had no idea, but we all followed each other and it went really well. Um, and I can recall a number of stories. I'm just conscious of the time really young officer i was in northern ireland in south Armagh. i was a covert i was i was on a covert mission right down on the border the ra discovered us and uh, we need to be rescued three links helicopters came in and we piled into the back of the first one and uh, it was in the dark it was horrible miserable and i saw the name on the back of the flying helmet and it was sharrox and i'm thinking i know sharrox <laughs> then i put the headset on to say thank you for rec rec rescuing us and uh it was. It was a. It was a lad I went to school with, who um, who used to go on for Britain. He used to talk forever, and then he started talking forever. And I went. I remember you. <laughs> so uh, later in Bosnia, I was on Mount Igman, Bosnia War. Uh, we were uh, bringing artillery fire down onto snipers in the city. The 
it's pretty horrendous actually it was a horrible horrible place and uh but the far forward fire control officer was a guy called simon wing from ensign and i was the i was the authority for the fires he was delivering and i trusted him completely to make sure that we we, we got it right um you know cracking and then and then I'll never forget being in Basra in 2008, 2009, I get my years mixed up. We were fighting every night for our lives. We were withdrawing from the city that the Iranians and the Daesh were taking us on. And um, the field hospital unit, our field, Royal One Field Hospital was kept beaten. It was from Collingwood, a couple of years above me. And then the Royal Three, which is further down the, down the pipe, if you got really serious injured, there was another lad from Collingwood called Richard Cantello. He's so far back, he'd send his washing forward. That's how, <laughs> that's how far we were from the fighting. He was listening to me laugh about it. And we had a couple of more combat medics as well in the force who I bumped into because they knew me from, from school. And uh, um, uh, they, they were just superb. And, and I remember Fett going to see Kev, and uh, he was a couple of years above me, and uh, to say thanks for everything. And I was really, really tired. And he insisted I made him a cup of tea. <laughs> when we were in Collingwood, hierarchy was all about who made tea for who. <laughs> so uh, you got yeah. just, just, uh, just hilarious. And uh, then in Afghanistan, I went to Afghan for a year. And on the way in, I took over from Jim Hockenhole, who I think visited the school uh, last year. He's a three star intelligence corps. I wouldn't emphasize he's only Intel Corps. He's not a combat guy, so he lacks a bit of credibility in my view, but he's super, super bright and far That's sharper than I, and he's the best intel boss we've had in the British Army for a long, in the British military for a long, long time. I, I, I interact with him almost every couple of days with what is happening in the um, in, in my part of the world. So, so uh, good. And then finally, I was a brigade commander. Kev Beater was also a brigade commander. He was a medical brigade commander, and we were deploying teams of people all over the Middle East and um, uh, uh, I think it was CDS, Nick Carter visited and said, Deacon, how is it? You always seem to have the best medical support wherever I go. And uh, I said, ha, huh. <laughs> and it was, uh, it was beaten. He was making sure that I was really well looked after with my team's work. So, so just that network, just don't forget it. And, and I guess there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, and this is my French funny story. Matthew, remember, remember this. Um, you're probably, you're probably too young to remember a movie called Kelly's Heroes. It was all about, it's a war movie where where uh, um, Donald Sutherland goes behind German lines to try and capture a load of gold. And there's a point he needs a bridge and he phones up a friend and the bridge gets delivered. And uh, it was a bit like that with our with my RHS network at work, work at school. And, and it, re, it triggers a memory because I was at Holbrook. I, I think I think it was in my fourth or fifth form. I was in a French class and my French teacher, um, it was those slide chalkboards, and uh, uh, I was I was seeing his daughter, and his daughter was called Kelly, and some of the characters in my uh, um, in my class had written behind the chalkboard, Kelly's hero is Gary Deakin, and the, it was covered over, and then <laughs> at one point in the class he slid the board back, and it came out Kelly's hero is Gary Deakin is Gary Deakin oh my god. I think he launched the eraser at me and then chased me down the corner. And I ran back to uh, the boarding house to confess my sins to my housemaster. So, uh, so it all goes, what goes around comes around. But uh, and I hope you guys have fun. The students I spoke to last night said to me, whatever you do, you shouldn't be passing on that bad behaviour. And I'm not encouraging that at all, not with the headmaster present. <laughs> um, and then finally, my last example of the, of the network is the uh, is more recent example, actually, here in Naples. The pandemic, the community is 300 strong. The British community is 300. Uh, the big headquarters is, is 900. We're over 3,000 all up. The British community is 300. And um, my and I'm the boss. And my command doctor was Surgeon Commander Ian Wood, uh, a former you know uh, boy from the school, probably one of the best combat doctors. He's but he's above the Beatons and the Cantellos. I mean, he's a proper hands-on special forces character. Really, really good. I think his father and his brother went to school, went to RHS, right. and he's going to send his boys, apparently, last time I've seen him. And he's left now. He's gone to Gibraltar. Good luck, the staff, because they're both tearaways. <laughs> <laughs> Complete tearaways. But, but, but honestly, and I've got now Commander Grant Kelly working for me, who does my information operations and media stuff. And uh, we're trying to fight a bit of media today, and he's been working on that. Evidently. And, and when you connect with your network, you just kind of trust people. You just know they're telling you the truth because you had the shared experiences, you shared the 
the same the same hallowed grounds of, of RHS and you and it's really really important and, and those networks will develop and you'll get some more and, and do it but, but but really really important to to understand you come from a family you become a team and then you build a network and uh, it's really really important really diverse really really and you know I reach out occasionally we have zoom calls we have you know I think of people that that are in, me, in, the, in the Navy even, as Ian Anik, my chum from, from uh, who's now into space or something, don't ask me how he's ended up there. Matthew's probably laughing about that. Uh, I've got friends who from school who are, uh, who are in the medical industry, in the medical world, and I'll, I'll not hesitate to get them. Hey, I need some advice. Let me run some ideas past them, so. That kind of finishes the part on, uh, on teamwork and networks. Uh, Simon, anything you'd like to ask? Well, my final part is on that. Perhaps it would be good just to, to bring some of the pupils in and ask some questions. I, I've got one here from uh, one of the boys. I said, Dear sir, may you ask him what his favourite subject was while he was at Royal Hospital School? Uh, simple one to start with, Gary. Yeah, that's good. Um, it was either history and it was history and then politics and economics. It was all my A level subjects. So I think that was the only time I really started to think, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> you know? Uh, but I, I, but I, I also, you know, I'm a big sailor, so seamanship was quite good when we first started, so that was quite good. But I think history and politics and economics, and I'm looking around, you know, I've got you know, um, learning, reading and listening, and learning is cool. Fantastic. We've got some people here with us, um, and they've got a few questions, I, I know. Uh, um, who wants to go first? Go on, Carrick. Um, I know you mentioned languages earlier, but if you had to redo RHS again, what what is one thing that you would change? Um, yeah, well, well, in in uh, so if I did it again, so so another so first thing is I think it wasn't co-ed until the end of my time, so co-educational I think is really important. So I think diversity is really 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 good, um, and it's really really great to see that that's that's now the case. I think that's really really important. Um, I kind of found the we, we were. I was going to get on to the next part. We were physically very resilient. I mean, we were, uh, you know, I went in the army. When I went to Santos, I was one of the fittest guys there. But I, but I, but, but I, I kind of lacked mental confidence. I think I, I, I lacked. And I, when I, I, you know, before I wanted to go and join the army for six months and be a soldier before I went to be an officer, and they went, no, no, you'll be fine. And I, I was in the end, but I, but I lacked a bit of mental resilience, I think, or or a bit of lack of confidence about the outside world, you know, because we were quite closed in and so uh, and, and and so even though you were good and, and and i think there's there's something about being an institution which is an advantage because you learn how to exploit the institution and leverage it for your best effect you know which is really good and i've gone from one institution to the other i don't know any other anything else but there's also a little bit of a disadvantage in that so that's where i think if i look at my own son did a gap year you know highly recommended you know went to uni i didn't go straight to uni that's another story my parents and my family weren't really into it um, I got my degrees later, but I, but I but I kind of, you know, I would encourage as much, as much, you know, out outward thinking as as, as possible. Adventure in the army, we do adventure training. It's freaking brilliant. We kind of did it at, at RHS as well. You know, where you get out and you did expeditions and did stuff and see the world and and, and experience it. So so I think as anything, it was it was that would probably be it. And it's not educational. Interesting. I would have done better at languages if I think if we were better. Uh, better better resource but that, that'd be my kind is that kind of answer the question yeah brilliant thank you Brad? Uh, what do you do to de-stress seeing as your, your role is um, very demanding okay that's a really that's another really really good one so um so i do so i do a lot of pt i, I do pt every day uh, i did when i was at school at rhs almost uh, i take a day a week when i don't I find that really, you probably notice I'm really high energy. I'm like kind of always been like that. And uh, um, that calms me and, and, and I do a lot of high pressure stuff. So just brings me down, which is really neat. Um, and then what I try and do, and now into that, I brought yoga, body balance type stuff, you know. So uh, and then I try and read something that's nothing to do with anything I work at. For years and years and years, all I did was read my profession because, I, you know, I believed it. You know, when you really immerse you, when you do what what I've done, when you're responsible for people's lives, you owe it to them to absolutely be the best you can at your game. So I try and chill and read. And I tell you what, um, uh, when I was at RHS, you know, every night, 15 minutes, we would read before we went to sleep. And we hated it because we were like, come on, we, just, we were just too tired, whatever. But but actually, it was a really good, 
really good idea. And I kind of do that, do a, do a little bit of that when I'm not too, when I'm not too tired and um, uh, get outside, get outside and see the big outdoors. And, and I, that's what I kind of I kind of do. Does that kind of answer the question? Yeah. What, what do you do to de-stress? Brad? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a safe question to ask? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. <laughs> um, I try to get out and do some runs. Try to do a bit of fitness. But apart from that, I don't really. Quite social though. Yeah. Yeah. Go down. Distressing your friends. Yeah. You have a good network, Brad. I'd like, like to think I'm somewhat a good network. <laughs> yeah, good. Uh, Gary, I'm sure there'll be some more questions, but um, do you want to, why don't you carry on and then we'll, we'll open it up. And the, we've got quite a lot of people online, so I'm sure there'll be more questions that come through it, it, through the chat as well. Sure, okay. Well, my last part's just literally a couple of minutes because you're probably getting bored with me by now. Uh, it's about resilience, really, and it kind of relates to the question, which is really, really neat. So thank you for that. Um, and for me, and it is important to be resilient uh, and to build your own resilience. And it's, it's really two things. It's the mental health and the physical health. Uh, I think we were really, really good at the, the uh, at RHS. We were good at the physical stuff. Uh, we weren't, I don't think we were, don't think we really understood what mental health was. Now, I think about going in the army now and I think of all the, the experiences we've had and been through, you know, that's something we weren't, we weren't, we, we weren't very good at. And we're still not, I think we still have a long way to, long way to go. Um, but I always think, I always think about it in terms of how do I stay fit and then stay mentally fit and get the balance between between the two right. Um, I say to everybody who comes to work for me, think of the three legs of the stool: yourself, your family, and your work. And you're the stool. And uh, uh, and in my personal case, you know, one of my legs fell off the stool many years ago. My first marriage went horribly wrong, and uh, it's because I got the three legs wrong. I was about my work 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 and myself uh, and I, I neglected the 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 the, the, fa the family part i just just got it slightly wrong uh, well i got it majorly wrong and it was uh, a later chief of defense staff who told me they said yeah you screwed it up you didn't get your three legs of the stool right so so i learned and, and and so how do you get that right and i think there's a really important point here about um learning as you're going and i have a great phrase about being learning not learned the learning not learned. When you get into a position like me, you know, you wear this freaking massive rank slide and people jump about the place. I, 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 I don't, I, I'm still learning every day. I'm still learning, and the, and so that's really, really important. Um, then it's how you learn, uh, and that's 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 the really important part. And I really believe in the thing called power of cognitive diversity, of of different thinking, of being challenged, and um, and and always then being prepared to ask for help. You know, I will own up. I've had uh, counselling, I've had therapy, I've had coaching in my life where I've I've found my hand up and gone, hey, this isn't working out for me. I'm struggling with this particular particular task. Um, and uh, I'll, g I'll give you a good example. In my uh, appointment in Scotland, I was commanding a force of 10,000 uh, men and women, of which when I took over, two and a half thousand of them couldn't fight tonight. So, um, you know, if you're an employer and you earn 10,000 people and two and a half thousand can't go to work in today, that's pretty, pretty bad, isn't it? I'm mean, looking at the headmaster, he's probably thinking, oh, my God. <laughs> you know? um, but when you looked at it, it was mental health, physical health. It was welfare issues. It was uh, it was just, whoa. And what we'd done is we'd come out of Afghanistan and Iraq. We'd come back from Germany. We were broken and then we needed to put the toys back, put the machine back together again. And as the leader, I was I was properly under pressure, and uh, I had uh, people two two soldiers killed on the ranges. I had a couple of suicides. I had a murder. I mean, uh, numerous car accidents, and we lost a load of soldiers through uh, drugs abuse, through cocaine, uh, positive testing. You're out. And uh, and I, I I have to say I was probably you know under a lot of pressure, media scrutiny, high level engagement, you know, to sort this out. And I did sort it out. It took some time. But I, but I, I went. I said to the army, I said, "Hey, I need some help. This is too tough." And they got me a coach. And every Friday, I would go and meet a coach who was a, you know, a professional. Uh, he's actually a, a risk guy, an oil and risk guy out of the North Sea. He was freaking brilliant. Who taught me about thinking about risk at home in a different, different way. Uh, and then through reading and challenging and learning, I, I was able to, to really think. And then it kind of rekindled. And Matthew will remember this. He was instrumental in teaching me this. Um, 
And so it was Bob, Bob Good. He was my English teacher, uh, probably one of the best I came across. You know, they taught the art of critical thinking, thinking out the box and challenging the norm. You know, is that the right way? And, uh, and and I do that now. I'll reach out and go, come on, give us, give us. And that's why when I prepared this, and I hope I've got it about right, you know, I went to a gang of students in Newcastle last night and went, hey, <laughs> what do you think? And I was terrified. Uh, but 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 you come out of it um, uh, better. So though, so so just 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 just, just recall that, and uh, you, you you'll pick up. And then what I also did was I I got myself on a civilian leadership course. Uh, you can only go on it as invited. It was a year long, three days here, two days here, three days here. Uh, with CEOs, CEOs, public private sector, and I took my leadership challenge, my my military problem to them. And over a period of time, we developed solutions. And when I finished in that appointment, we we turned two and a half thousand men and women who couldn't fight to about 800, 900 who would probably be who would probably leave. So um, so that was really, 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 really important to me. And and I and I kind of I kind of would wrap all that up by just saying, you know, um, it, it it is about. Uh, being yourself and following your passions and and and, and, and enjoying it and having fun. Like I said I leave the army when the fun runs out. I've now got to leave next year unless it's a war for me to go fight somewhere. Otherwise, it's just no work. Um, but uh, you know, it's really, 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 really important. You've got to be quite bold and you've got to follow your intuition. I'll finish off with a very quick story. I was in Scotland. I was invited to go to um, a Stonewall conference, which is uh, you know the LGBT rights group uh, no senior officer had ever been to one before i went yeah okay let's go for it let's turn up and when we got there uh, it was at first it was in the media and my uh, my team said to me said hey look boss we need to do something we need to announce something here because this is first i said oh, well why don't we do something and so one of the guys came up with this idea that on the last friday of february in scotland it's called purple friday it's where they celebrate lgbt um uh history end of lgbt history month and support to lgbt youth in scotland where there's a problem in scotland with recognizing you know equality and diversity so we came up with this idea that we'd fly rainbow flags off every army base in scotland on on purple friday and i arbitrarily came out with the idea and went let's do it and without asking permission we just went for it and that friday came along and uh, some months later we bought the flags, we put them out, we'd done everything. And uh, it just so happened that I managed to get the Chief of Defence, you see him on TV, and the Secretary of Defence to come to Scotland to do to do a, uh, a defence board in Scotland to talk about the big management of defence in Scotland and on the same day. It was like, yes, they're going to, uh, they're going to, uh, uh, one of them is going to raise the flag and we're going to have it on social media. The Secretary of State for Defence, I can't remember his name, Fallon, went, no, nah, I'm not doing that. I'm not putting myself out there. The um, chief of defence went, no, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to be seen to be doing that. It came to me and I did it. 17,000 hits on Facebook in like 20 minutes. You know, OK, we got some adversity, in, but actually it was brilliant. And the result and the outcome was 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 superb. Um, the, the day before we were doing a rehearsal, we stood around in a circle and there's a regiment of sergeant major there. And he says, he says, sir, right, this is what's going to happen. There's going to be a TV camera. Here's a camera here. And the provost sergeant's going to come up to you, stand between, he's going to give you the flag. You're going to walk to the flagpole and hoist the flag. And uh, and uh, if you give me the flag, so we rehearse. And I said to the said to the regiment sergeant major, which way up does it go? <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, um, at which point uh, 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 everybody takes their phones out to Google to you know come up with a solution. At which point a young officer steps forward and said, "Sir, with respect, you can go both ways." <laughs> 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 anyway, and I remember the laughter and the joy and the fun of that uh, particular and that's you know and that's what it's all about so hey team you know um, enjoy your journey and make sure you enjoy it because that is the, the most important thing conscious was only 15 minutes left and there's time for questions and uh, do enjoy the Facebook posts uh, which are which are pretty impressive I have to say I'm moved by them and uh, I hope I haven't bored anybody to death and you found it found it interesting. I'm stood by for some hopefully challenging questions. Gary, th thank you very much indeed. You, you've covered a lot of ground and uh, I, I know that we've got some questions here. Uh, so I'm going to open up to the floor first of all, and then uh, I'll, I'll pick up on the other ones that, that come through. So those of you who have joined remotely, do put your uh, questions in and I'll, I'll, I'll relay those. Alternatively, put your hand up. So 
Uh, who's going first? Emma? Um, where do you find your inner strength? Okay, good one. So I do them one at a time, or do you want to give me a few? Uh, I won't do one at a time then, because I'll, uh, I'll, I'm just fiddling with the technology at the moment. So we can... <laughs> <laughs> it's the heaven master challenge of the technology. <laughs> Multitasking, there we are. You can see your see your enemy now or your audience rather yeah cool so um so inner strength i think it becomes uh it's about being self-aware it's about really understanding who you are what your strengths and weaknesses are and then being really prepared to go yeah i'm, I'm, not, I'm not comfortable with that. i don't know that or i do or i'm good at that that's where i've got mine from it's just being um it's, it's being authentic you know and i've read a lot and i study a lot and uh there's a brenny brenny brand's brilliant read about you know if you're not saying her ted talk on authenticity she's done a lot of work on uh, on it and i think that's where i get my personal inner strength from just being honest with myself you know and, and i haven't been all the time i've struggled a couple of times and screwed up but you learn by your mistakes and that's key learning not learned great question uh, this question has come in it says hi how did you justify to yourself the times you went to war and the actions that happened there oh, that's a really interesting one um yeah, so so of course you you uh, uh, I mean I'm a professional soldier. I have a job to do. I get a mission and a task. You know the mission and the task is going to be in accordance with the law. Uh, so you're operating within a mandate and what, with what's legal. Uh, you that's that's really really important. Uh, and then you then have to make sure you do the right thing. So if I think of Iraq in particular, twice I went to Iraq, both as once as a company commander, once as a battle group commander, both times really hard. Um, the I took men to war on both occasions to probably into a campaign that that uh, men and women to war sorry who who uh, with soldiers who were from places that didn't support the war I mean they you know my my regiments from the northwest of England Liverpool Manchester uh, Duke of Lancaster's regiment you know sort of wider Cumbria and so therefore you had to really really understand where everybody was from and and make sure you you did things correctly and understood the big picture so. So, and you did what was right. So, so that was right. Now, sometimes it went wrong, and uh, you can Google me. I think somewhere. I mean, um, I was involved in a horrible incident. We got drawn in to to help some people, and we on the way out we got ambushed. Uh, some tribes kicked off, and then we kicked off. And uh, my gunner, my my own gunner, uh, shot a nine year old girl, and she was running for cover uh, uh, across. He did it by complete accident. Uh, I'll never forget it. It traumatized him for life. We um, we administered first aid under fire. We put, put her in the back of our, our truck. Our warrior was an armored fighting vehicle, and I can visualize her eyes right now as 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 as, as, as you know life passed before us. And uh, um, and then we did the right thing. I mean, it was it was a tragic accident. That's this is what happens in war. Uh, and you have to look yourself in the mirror when you shave and go, hey, was that the right thing? Did we do the right thing? We actually went to help somebody, and then this occurred. So you're really conscious of 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 doing the right thing and we did do the right thing uh but sometimes tragically it does go wrong um amnesty international pursued us for a couple of years afterwards uh and you, there was some new stuff and there was an illegal killing we were investigated but eventually uh um it was it was it was fine i mean it was tragedy but but so a really really tough question and i hope i've i've kind of given you an answer but bottom line you do what's right what's morally correct I can just extend that a little bit. There's, there's a lot of debate about the uh, prosecution of former serving personnel and uh, the sort of time period after which uh, perhaps they shouldn't be prosecuted. Uh, and there's some, some cases recently. I mean, do you have an opinion on whether people who are serving their country, uh, putting their own lives on the line, should be immune from that kind of prosecution after a certain period of time? Um So, 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 I, so my personal view this is a very personal view, and this is not politics. This is a very personal view. I don't think anybody should be immune if they've committed a crime, you know, if they've done something wrong, if they've committed a war crime or they've committed a uh, a, a crime. I don't think that's my personal view. I I, I think the individuals would, would struggle to live themselves. I um, I commanded the first time Duke of Lancaster's regiment. It was originally part of it was the Queen's Lancashire Regiment. Um, they were um, it was it was in, when it was when I was in Basra in 2003. They were the ones that committed the war games when they killed Baha Musa. They, they they murdered him in custody. I was there. I was on the battle group next door that night. And what had happened was um, an ambulance had been blown up and an officer had been killed. And the commanding officer, um, who's a good friend, uh, said 
I'll never forget it. You know, he wasn't Mike Emanuel, so he's another bank with Emanuel. So go out and get those bastards. Find the people that killed my man. And that's what, and you let the dogs off the leash. You, you don't do that. That's discipline and poor leadership. And uh, pe- and this guy, they, people die. Lots of people die. And and so I think you can't, you know, if, if somebody's committed a crime, they should be held accountable for it. Now, the challenge you've got is where you've got vexatious crime uh, claims. And so I have been a victim of that. You know, the you've seen the, um, the claims, you know, the story I told you, uh, about with about the young girl that was taken out of all proportion colored up it was about lawyers trying to make money you know there was fabricated statements i mean and you live this as your life and it's it's uh and so i so i do think there's a there's a time limit on something that is not there's probably something about probability about probability you know it's if if in all probability if there's not enough proof then you know and, and the problem with this situation is you know that when that girl died there were no cops there were no cops for miles i mean i did a reenactment. We drew pictures. We took photographs. I mean, you could only just do it because there was it was just there was a break, complete breakdown in law and order. There was nothing. I mean, so how do you investigate a, a crime like that? And that's the drama. That, that that's the problem. Sorry, I went on a bit. Gary, thank you. Um, a, a very different type of question, but uh, it says, uh, can you ask uh, Gary what his favourite place he has lived or been to? So, so a question of the places you've been to. Clearly, travelled widely, uh, and as I said, so a whole range of, of places. I mean, perhaps I suspect by what you said, Bosnia is not going to be up there. But favourite place you've been to, sort of visited? Uh, it's a moment in time. It may be just coming home after a tour. I don't know. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I, I don't. It's, it's, the thing about being in the army is you don't get to go to glamorous. I like really. Like, if, if, if I was going to do something now, I'd probably join the navy and get on those carriers. The Queen Elizabeth is coming through, and she's going out to the. To the Far East, you know what I mean. She's going out to the Pacific and coming back if she can make, pay for it, pay for the fuel. Um, um, I, I, I guess it's not so much about the place as the people. Mm. I, I remember Iraq, um, desperate, desperate place. But you'd see the children, and you'd see the people that were, you know, they were they were really, really nice. And I think of Bosnia and, and saw some horrendous things. Uh, um, so, so, so I don't think there's particularly a place. I, I guess. Uh, I, I spent some time in America in working U.S. Central Command. Uh, I didn't even talk talk about that, but I was I was Sinjar Mountain. I met President Obama. Um, I did piles of stuff on the counter ISIS campaign. I was the lead guy for that. Um, that was quite interesting to live in America, culturally live there, and uh, experience that. But I, I didn't. I got to go sailing a couple of times. And they, they just like shouting generals, fucking grind harder. Sorry, I just. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think there's a particular my choice would be on a yacht going downwind at 20 knots hanging on for grim death with a great crew of, of sailors in the sunshine would be my place you know um, Gary there's uh, some more questions what I might do is just go along uh, and they could uh, if they if they read out their questions because I'm conscious we've got about sort of five minutes and, and then perhaps you can uh, see if you can meld these all into one highly coherent uh, eloquent uh, answer. I, that's the challenge to you. So here we go. We're going to go along. Go on. Uh, my question is, what do you think is most important character, character, sorry, characteristic of someone who's about to go into the army or any force? So important characteristics of people joining the forces, particularly the army? No, it's quite yep. similar. Any tips or any advice that you'd give to a young officer? Tips to a young officer? Um, mine's how might future uh, military leaders differ from the current leaders in the army? So future and, and currently leaders, the changing leadership qualities, and that's it. So th- there we are. So we've got a little bit about character. I suppose there's a lot about character, really, isn't it? Uh, and perhaps I can uh, ask you to have a think about that. Or comment. Yeah, really cool. They're, they're really good questions, actually. Um, <clears throat> So I think at the core of it, the uh, it, uh, I think, and I would say this, wouldn't I, because I've lived it, but, but I think at the core, the same values and standards, same ideas would be, I think you need to be fit, you need to be, people need to be curious, you need to be, you don't need to be a, a super bright intellectual person, it's just about about uh, being able to be a leader in any environment. I think that's really, really, uh, really, really important. So I think the core characteristics are probably the same, but I do think it's changing. Um, you know, I'm doing a lot of work right now with AI, machine learning, uh, synthetic environments, uh, life 3.0 type stuff, whatever they call it. I've just read, read and it's just like mind blowing. I think cyber space. I'm doing work. We've been doing some stuff on that. I was in a cyber conversation this afternoon. It was like blowing my mind. I was like freaking out. 
you know, and, and I think uh, your generation will be much, much more astute, much, much sharper to that th- than us. I think we're quite, I think, uh, I think about being, I think future military leaders will be much more, um, it'll be much more dynamic and agile than it even is now. And, and, and trust me, I mean, you don't see it, but the world is a really, really, um, uh, you know, un, unsettled place. And, you know, I ran in the army when I left uh, RHS and went, went to Sandhurst. If you'd have said to me then, I was 19, 18, 19, that, uh, that I would have done all the things I've done, I would have never have dreamt it. You know, Afghanistan? What do you mean, really? Iraq? Bosnia? You know, I just never would never have. So expect the unexpected. And I think the agility, the idea of having agility, the idea of, 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 of being agile, that they're really, really important qualities. If I look around myself now, and I'm lucky to have got to the got to the very top, the top like one, two percent in the army, those that I've left behind are really good people. Every single one of them is a really good people. But they probably just lack agility, uh, the ability to learn, to learn on the job to go, OK, that wasn't right. And, and be honest about it. So so I think the key qualities are probably the same. But in the future, I think it will be, you know, about the tech. Thing. But, I, but I come back to my major message. It's all about people, all about people. And if you really, really care about people and it doesn't matter what line of work you do. I give you the army example, but I can, you know, I think if you went into anything, if you want, you want to be a leader, then you need to really care for people. And if you do that, then uh, you'll nail it. And and and, I, and I, honestly, I'm not just saying this because I've been paid to say it. I, I got that at the school you're at now. You know, that's where I was taught. You know, and there's a housemaster listening in, probably thinking, oh my god, he was useless. <laughs> it's speak is quiet actually. So, uh, but uh, uh, I'm sure. That's a one for offline. Well, look, Gary, I have to say uh, it, it's been an absolute pleasure. I know, I know that um, within there, there are so many gems. Uh, you know, the idea that ideas have no rank, uh, the, 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 the point that comes across about the, the importance of caring uh, for people, uh, working through people, the power of the network, which I think is a, something that the school increasingly uh, recommends, uh, sort of uh, recommends to its pupils, but also values in its alumni. Uh, the significance of balance. I thought that the analogy of the, the stool really important for for those whether your pupils or indeed staff are like uh, learning not learned. And I think you know, demonstrated through your constant uh, desire to, to 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 learn, whether it be outside of the uh, of the army or whether it's been through masters as well. Expect the unexpected, and I, I suppose that really resonates with all of us at the moment. Uh, none of us thought this time last year we would be where we are today. Uh, and, and also that real sense of knowing your own weaknesses and being in, in a time when mental health is as important as physical health, being able to put your hand up and uh, and to recognise that you need help. I think are all really important messages for, for the young people here at the school, but indeed for me and, and also for my colleagues who are here as well. So, G- Gary, thank you very much indeed. And uh, I just uh, like to say on behalf of us all, virtual and real, uh, we really appreciate you taking this time and look forward to welcoming you back to RHS in 2021, uh, following in uh, footsteps of obviously one of your colleagues who just warmed the place up for them. So think of him as your, your pre-act. Uh, <laughs> look forward to hopefully uh, hearing a little few more of those gems uh, next year. But Gary, thank you very much indeed. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Really appreciate the opportunity. Uh, and also just I'd like to say thank you very much to Simon Marsh. Simon is here. He's just over there, if you sort of mean. But Simon, I know, has been instrumental. Uh, it's actually Simon's. Uh, it's it's Simon's last week with us here. He moves on uh, to a new role. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm very grateful to him as well. So just uh, thank you, Simon. Thank you very much, Gary. Yeah, thanks, Simon. Pretty good. I'll be in touch, Gary, but thanks very much. I hope you have the rest of, enjoy the rest of your evening. And I suspect I, I suspect that's wine. Was it in your glass? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I need it after the day I've had. And I'm on at like five in the morning. Hey, hey, can I just say to the students, thank you very much for listening. Really appreciate it. Really, I love the questions and uh, just keep that curious curiosity going. Really, really good. And I hope to meet you all soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye, Gary. Thank Bye. you.